imposter. Calling the police, calling the G-men, calling all Americans to war on the underworld. Gangbusters, with the cooperation of law enforcement officers of the United States, presents a picture of the endless war of the police on the underworld. Let's break it. Well, hello again. I'm glad everybody decided to return. At least some of you, I hope. <laughs> Let's uh, start this video out by taking one more look at the power supply. Let's go down here and take a look at it and see what we've got. Now, I know we've gone over this thing over and over and over, but, you know, it won't hurt to do it again. And besides, later on in the video, we're going to come back to it one more time anyway. So let's just get warmed up, you know, for the main event. Looking at the uh, power supply, we have a couple of filter capacitors, or the British, they call them smoothing capacitors. I like that term better smoothing because it smooths the uh, pulsating DC coming out of the rectifier. I always like that term, smoothing capacitor. Anyway, we have a 75 uh, microfarad here, a 30 microfarad here, and they're separated by a cheap choke. Remember the old cheap choke? A 1500 ohm, uh, in this case, 2 watt resistor right here. Well, let me show you something else that, I, that has come into my possession. In the last mishmash video that I uploaded, I showed you this Hammerlin, uh, the unboxing of this Hammerlin HQ200 and a uh, Silvertone plastic radio that was sent to me by our good subscriber, I'm a Junk Collector. Well, he had uh, showed this radio in a video that he uploaded. And, you know, I asked him a question. I said, you know, are you, you know, how much would you want for that radio? Well, the next thing I know, it showed up at my doorstep, you know. <laughs> anyway, we worked out a deal, and it now belongs to me. Let's take a look at the schematic of this radio. Now, it has a rectifier. Actually, it's got a couple of diodes that function as the rectifier. Whereas the radio we're working on, you know, the, uh, the General Electric, the break it and fix it radio has a tube. This has the, you know, this is a full wave uh, rectifier setup. Over here though we have two electrolytic capacitors just like we have in the radio we're working on. Now the cheap choke in our radio is 1500 ohms. The one right here is 500. A 60 uh, uh, and a, a 40. Let me see what is that. That is yeah a 40. A 60 microfarad, a 40 microfarad with a resistor between them of 500 ohms. Whereas with our General Electric, we have a 75, I think it is, and a 30, and then a 1500 ohms. Well, here is that setup removed from the radio. And now keep in mind, this is supposed to be 500 ohms right here, this resistor. But what we have here between these two, now this is not original. Originally, this, this uh, radio had a single canned capacitor. It went bad, and they, you know, they, they put this thing together like this. But sitting on top, between the two capacitors, is th there's six 3,000 ohm 2 watt resistors. It's supposed to be 500. Now, can you imagine a newbie taking a look at this and saying, what the heck is this? It's supposed to be 500, and I'm looking at six 3,000 ohm 2 watt resistors? What the heck is all that about? Well, I'm going to show you. The fella that owned this radio, or that whoever owned it, there may have been two or three owned it, they all seemed to know what they were doing. I mean, the radio was a beater. A beater radio, that's what old I'm a Junk Collector called it. And he was right. It's a beater. It's pretty well beat up. I mean, it's been torn into, things have been replaced, and it's been, uh, you know, jury-rigged, but, you know, it still probably worked fine. And I'll tell you why. Take a look at this. Now, this is calculating resistors in parallel. This is a calculator for calculating resistors in parallel. We needed 500 ohms between the, these uh, two filter caps and apparently the guy that, I don't know, the guy that did this did not have 500, uh, 500 ohms. All he had was six 3,000 ohms. <laughs> I can't figure that one out, but these are all in parallel. All hooked together on one side, all hooked together on the other side, and then soldered across the two electrolytic uh, terminals that, that they're supposed to be soldered to. Well, let's find out what six 3,000 ohm resistors wired in parallel 
what the resistance is. Remember, we need 500 ohms. Let's find out what it is. Let me zero in so we can get a good reading here now. Are you ready? Now I'm going to hit this old calculator, calculate button right there. And you're going to see what pops up in this window. We've got six 3,000 ohm resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go. Calculate. 500 ohms. Bingo. That's exactly what that, uh, what that, uh, <clears throat> Resistor is supposed to be if I can find it in my camera again. Yeah, where are you? Where are you? Let me hold my pencil. Here. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard sometimes trying to find stuff, but right there it is. 500 ohms this is exactly what we needed, and that's exactly what he got. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, there's not a whole lot of difference in a lot of these radios between what you're seeing, what I'm doing, what I, you know, what, what Brendan and I are going through to say A5. There's not a whole lot of difference. Uh, you're going to see different things that look different, but basically do the same thing in various parts of the radio. All right, let's move on. The next thing I have to do is make my old mentor here, Brendan, I got to make him happy. He thought that I overly stressed, you know, the 10 volts on the control grid of the converter as being, you know, the top level. He said that was not the issue. He told me about 10 volts would be about the upper limit. But you know what, actually, I think it depends on the tube. It depends on the oscillator, the design, you know, that the engineers did. What he was trying uh, to tell me, and I should have passed on to you, was, not so, you know, forget the voltage level. That, that's not the important thing here. The important thing here is that it's supposed to be negative voltage. I had negative 6.3 volts. That was okay. It was negative voltage, all right? It, you know, this this is just kind of a ballpark figure, even though I was way off. It, what is, you don't want positive voltage on the converter control grid. You want negative. Negative, negative, negative. That means that the oscillator is doing its job, okay? I hope you got that, and I, that should make my old mentor, uh, Brendan, pretty happy now. I didn't mean to come on like gangbusters with that thing. <laughs> Let's start the last thing I want to cover by going back to video number three in this series. There's a Slovenija 12345 feller, and he said we were talking about the voltage to the plate being supplied through the filament or the heater on the rectifier tube. And he said that filament also acts like a simple constant current supply. Now let me tell you, let me show you what he meant by that. Let's take a look at the data sheet for a 35W4, which is our rectifier in this radio we're working on. We come down here, it tells you the heater voltage, how to mount it and everything else, and you get on down. This is just a website I found, handy dandy little website, and we keep going down. It shows you the different pins on the tube, you know, what, what they're connected to. Anyway, what I'm looking for right now is I'm coming down, and I'm coming down, and I see here that it says the filter input capacitor for this tube should be 40 microfarads. That's the first, that's the first uh, electrolytic capacitor after the tube. It should be 40 microfarads. Well, let's take a look and see what we've got. All right, what we've got is 75 microfarads. The tube data says go with 40, and we've got 75. Now we've got a 30 over here, but ours is 75 right out of the rectifier. How can they get away with that? Well, you know, I've always been taught that if you make this first uh, electrolytic capacitor too large, and then you turn on the radio, this poor old tube has to instantly fill that thing. It's done, you know, I mean, we're talking like that, you know? And if it's too large and the tube is trying to fill it, it's, it's too big for the tube design, the tube will arc. It'll arc and you, you'll wind up with sparks and everything and it just won't work. And it, you could damage the tube. So how do they get away with this 75, which is almost double what the data calls for? Well, it's like what our commenter said. He said that the voltage, I mean, it's a current, a constant current supply through here to this plate, and which does not allow a big time spark to occur because actually what's happening is that that uh, heater that the voltage to the plate is going through 
actually acts as a constant current source which keeps the tube from arcing and sparking. It won't allow it to, you know, to get ruined. Okay? So that's how they get away with using a much larger uh, filter capacitor right off the rectifier. They let that, that, little, that poor little old heater does a lot, you know. They let that poor little old heater control, you know, steadily control the current to that plate and the voltage to that plate so it doesn't arc. I hope I've made myself clear on that. That's what that, that's what our commenter was saying and that's what I'm saying and I discussed this with, with Brandon also and he said, yeah, that's what's going on here. That little old filament there does a whole lot, folks. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here and I'll tell you why. It's been a long week. Today's Friday. I'm tired. I'm worn out. And uh, tomorrow is Saturday morning, and, and at, at 11 o'clock, I'm going into a spa, and there's a young lady waiting in there to give me a full-body massage. I cannot wait. My shoulders and neck are killing me. I'm just going to let her work me over. And then uh, while I'm doing that, wifey's going to be shopping, and when we get done, I'm going to take her out with a little something to eat. Not much, because later in the afternoon, we're going to fire up the old Blackstone Grill. And uh, in my next Mishmash video, you'll see what I'm cooking. Anyway, I hope you learned a little something here extra today. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully next time we can get beyond this converter and start getting over here into the first uh, IF amplifier. Okay? The first IF amplifier. and Maybe even get through this one. I don't know because there's not a whole lot here. I'd like to be able to get at least through the secondary transformer or up to the secondary transformer or secondary winding of this uh, uh, second IF uh, can. So anyway, I hope you all have a good weekend. I plan to. I'm just going to lay on my face and let that woman work me over. Anyway, until next time, appreciate you being here. This is John.